Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment. And if you're a subscriber of ours, welcome back to our video channel. And if you're new, please subscribe down below to get and learn more information. It may not have this wonderful VBM super analogic heat exchanger special machine. But today we're gonna go over why a heat exchange machine may or may not heat. And there could be failures in different spots across all different types of heat exchanger espresso machines. And what is a heat exchanger? Just real quick, you have a large boiler vessel that has half filled usually or more with water, top half has steam, and basically there's a pipe that goes either vertically or horizontally through the boiler. That water gets used to make your espresso. It's flash heated and also as the uh, group head cools, that water reverts back through that heat exchange tube or pipe and then comes out hot on the other end. That's how these E61 group heads typically get hot and they get piping hot. So hot that you should not be able to keep your hand on the group head like I have. Now this is a naked machine and when I say naked is because the extra side panels have been removed. Uh, it does come in different colors. But let's get down to the nitty gritty <clears throat> on why a heat exchange machine may overheat or may not heat at all. And we're just using this as an example, but uh, it's a learning across many machines that have a pressure stat, okay? This is a small pressure stat, they come larger. The small ones, uh, the, the plus is, is that you don't hear a clicking noise because there are VBM uh, heat exchange machines in the past that had the large pressure stat, but you heard a click sound when it turned on, turned off, turned on, turned off. Again, as the group head is losing heat, water is coming back through the heat exchange pipe and also the boilers, even though they're insulated in the pipes, still lose heat. So it's maintaining a spectrum in or a delta difference in the temperature where it clicks on, clicks off. Now these don't make the noise, but these are a little bit more susceptible to corrosion, okay? And to explain how this works, uh, these pressure stats, okay, they're based on pressure. Remember I said the bottom half is filled with water, top half is steam. Well, these are located and attached to a pipe near the top of the boiler. And as steam pushes up through here, inside there is a diaphragm, okay? And if you think of my hand here as a diaphragm, pressure is coming up, right? As the pressure comes up, there is a switch. Okay, when the diaphragm's down, it's sending power to the heating element to heat up the boiler. So when you first turn on the machine, that diaphragm is down. As the pressure comes up, it hits the switch inside. Once it hits that switch, basically what happens is it turns off the power to the heating element. As the unit cools, the diaphragm comes down puts power to the heating element, comes right back up, comes down, up, down, up, down, up. Again, the bigger pressure stats, you hear, okay, the clicking sound. On the smaller ones, you don't, but the smaller ones are a little bit more susceptible, and you're gonna see a close-up of this one right here. Uh, one of the things to mitigate this issue uh, at first is to get inside the machine, and on the analogics, uh, you have to take off the uh, body panel here. There's a bunch of screws here, uh, Allen key and flathead, and the pressure stat is located right here. Now, in the past, they have put a hole here. Uh, on the current machines, they haven't, and I think it's for more for safety reasons, just that you don't get a screwdriver there and actually hit the terminals. Even though they're insulated, you may hit them with the screwdriver. So take the cover off so you have good access, uh, and if you're getting an over temp, try turning the screw to the minus sign right there counterclockwise a half a turn. See if that improves, improves it. If you're not getting any heat, turn it clockwise to increase it. See if it improves the situation where it does heat. Now, if that doesn't resolve it by turning this little screw uh, on this uh, pressure stat, and this one's made by Modder, but it can be made by other companies, uh, you may have corrosion in here. And corrosion uh, and I don't say lime scale anymore, I say corrosion because corrosion also includes uh, corrosion by purified, distilled, 
uh, or very uh, or RO water that's very pure has some minerals to make the machine work but it reacts with the brass or the metals inside the machine and corrodes that little diaphragm that's supposed to be going up and down. Now some customers have tried to descale this part, uh, have been successful, but in the majority of cases I believe this part needs to be replaced. Now this is not a machine issue, this is a water issue. And I always say it's the water, 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 and some people say no it's not. Well, usually if they come into our shop here, I take it apart or a technician takes it apart and we show them, okay? The green is usually from purified water or water that's too pure, and that causes corro uh, corrosion. On the other side of the spectrum is your hard water, high in calcium or high in magnesium. Typically the calcium uh, will be white, magnesium typically will be black. There are other colors as well. I used to have a chart back in 1997 when we started. I had one chart and I still can't find it to this day, but once I do, I will share that with you. Uh, you can take a cotton swab and with the scale and try to fix this uh, and then put it back. Uh, here you see some Teflon tape. Manufacturer does, VBM in this case, does use some uh, polyethylene or PFTE tape. I'm sorry. Um, so, but you usually don't have to. It's a compression fitting. And then just adjust it to see if it works. If you still have an issue, time to replace. Okay, so you want to replace this. But the first place to look is if you have corrosion after turning the screw, okay? Another area that can happen if the machine got zapped with an electrical surge, there are contacts in this switch right here. You know, the clicking on and off, on and off. Uh, sometimes there's carbon buildup. At that point, it's not worth it to uh, repair the switch or replace the switch portion. Just replace the whole thing. It, in the end, it's probably gonna be cheaper anyway. So this is what you need to do. One facet, if the machine is overheating or not heating at all, most likely it could be the pressure stat. It could be other areas where there's a short on the circuit board, uh, a, a short on the switch, or even another uh, a short that's going leakage to ground that your GFI is not picking up. It can cause an overheat situation as well, or a no heating situation. Uh, electricity is very, very weird when it comes to espresso machines. So that is it in a nutshell. Uh, just another st topic is a lot of machines do have the PID uh, temperature sensors or probes. And there again, a lot of times overheating happens because that probe is inside the boiler. Uh, it has a film over it and the temperature is reading correct on the display, but it's actually overheating that the safety valve is blowing open or the steam, a lot of steam is coming out of the group head or steam is coming out of somewhere. So again, corrosion uh, that can affect these parts. And that's why I keep on saying it's the water, 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 soften the water. Softened water doesn't mean filtered water. Filtered water doesn't mean softened water. Filtered water that you get either from your fridge or a filtration system typically just removes the bad stuff out of the water, but doesn't remove the calcium or the magnesium okay so it's it's a good idea to soften the water uh, a resin filters of some nature that's going to grab the magnesium uh, calcium out of the water and let the good stuff pass through if you have any questions or comments please put down below i appreciate you watching and as i always say coffee first everything else second thanks for watching java jim and have a great day